ट्रिपोर्ट हरे कृष्णा सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द फिफ्थ सेशन ऑफ द भक्ति प्रवेश टूडेज टॉपिक इज सौहृद सो भक्ति इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ रिवाइविंग वन लॉस्ट रिलेशनशिप विद गॉड वी मे बी प्रैक्टिसिंग मेनी रिचुअल्स और डूइंग मेनी एक्टिविटीज और हैविंग अ बिग प्रोग्राम ऑफ साधना यू नो एज अ part of the yogic process but ultimately what is bhakti it is the process of reviving one's relationship with god so in this process <clears throat> we have uh, you know as a, an entrance into this sublime uh, realm of bhakti or devotion we have uh, brought together this course called bhakti pravesha in order to lay good foundations uh, based on which we can build our uh, ongoing path of bhakti or devotion so as a, a preparation to that and today we are going to understand this quality called saukhurda yeah saukhurda or loving attitude so in the last few se last session we've learned about service attitude today we're going to learn something about saukhurda so this is a very very beautiful word so let us enter into the scriptures where all we have come across this word saukhurda yeah so in the bhagavad gita you know uh, there is a wonderful verse yeah which has this word called suhrida yeah how many of you know what verse is that suhridam sarva bhutanam sarva lokam ahishwaram yeah bhoktaram how does it start bhoktaram yagya tapasam okay so as i said bhakti is a process of reviving one's relationship with god so how does this process of revival occur the first step towards it to understand the nature of god yeah the qualities of god yeah so one such beautiful verse in the gita which describes about the beautiful qualities of god is you know this particular verse yeah bhukta ram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhridam sarva bhutanam gyatva mam shanti nirchit shanti yeah peace so peace is what all of us are striving for so much yeah this whole material world is kuntha a place of anxiety yeah so the absence of anxiety is vaikuntha so what is this reason for anxiety yeah these days all uh, problems of life are more mental than physical yeah so all glories to the advancement of civilization yeah the problems uh, we don't see more uh, you know problems of hunger or thirst or famine etc we see more problems of anxiety depression stress yeah and not knowing what to do with excess so there's a more increase in the anxiety so we have lot of in psychology we have anxiety scale depression scale all which measure your levels of anxiety and depression yes so uh so what is the reason for anxiety or lack of peace and what is the uh, way to become peaceful yeah in the whole world there are so many peace talks that are going on yeah be it the U united nations or any world organization there are a lot of peace talks the peace talks have been increasing but there is no real peace in the world yet yeah and interestingly uh, during the pre independence era during the time of the world war the second world war when all the nations were entering into a state of war you know hatred and uh, destroying each others existence yeah 
that was a time when world leaders have turned towards India for solution. And many prominent leaders have actually, they're very wonderful quotes we find come across this in the Lilamra. Yeah, the, the prominent world leaders like the presidents of different countries too announced that today the world is looking at India for solution. Why? Because India is the hub of spirituality. Yeah, and it's a, uh, only by the power of the spirituality can there be a hope for world peace. And it is so very true. Yeah, unless we understand our own spirituality, there cannot be peace within our soul, ourselves, within the families we are existing, within the communities we are existing, or in the world that we are existing. So how do we get into this realm of being peaceful with one's own self? Yeah, before we find the peace outside us, around the world, the first step towards it is one should be peaceful with one's own self. Oftentimes, when we look into our own self, our own heart, it's our mind, it's, you know, it's always agitated. So why is there a lack of peace within our own self? Yeah, the reason for it is the desire to control. So that is why this word says, Bhuktaram yagya tapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram sukhridam sarvabhutaram nyatvamam kshantir nirchit one who understands that Bhuktara, that Krishna is the supreme beneficiary of all the yajnas and tapasas and he is the supreme controller yeah. and he is the supreme well-wishing friend, Sukhpurida. Here comes the word Sukhpurida, supreme well-wishing friend. For that person, there is peace within and without. So how is this? It's very easy to quote the verse and you know give the meanings of each words. But how is it? How do we? How does this understanding make one peaceful? So let's get into a bit of details of it. So if we get into the root cause of anxieties in our life, the root of it is you know the it could be different uh, reasons why a person is anxious. Maybe because one's expectations are not fulfilled. Or we are uh, desiring a particular outcome, but it's not happening. Or the relationships are not working in the way we want them to work. Some people are not responding or reciprocating in a way that we want them to reciprocate. Or my job is not exactly going in the direction I wanted it to go. Many things. We have so many expectations. Most of the times, if not all the time. Things don't happen as per what our, we expect them to. And that's the cause of anxiety. So why should things happen according to our wish and desire? Yeah, go to the root of that. If you go to the root of that, why we want things to happen our way? Why we want things to go in the way that we like? The subtle psychology is that we want to be in control of situations, of things, of people. And this controlling mentality is deep within, ingrained in human nature. We might think that, no, no, I don't, I'm not a controller. I'm a very, you know, a very sattvic, very uh, mild, gentle person, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't control. The sign, the symptom of a non-controllership is a person is peaceful. Yeah, if a person has understood that I'm not the controller, that person is very peaceful. Yeah. So, this controlling nature is very much ingrained in human consciousness in human mentality, especially in the, in the conditioned state of mind. So, but when one understands that Krishna is that controller, that the Supreme Lord is a controller, not me. Why is Krishna the controller? Because he is a Supreme Proprietor. 
What does it mean that he's a supreme proprietor? Yeah, he's a supreme creator. He's a creator, proprietor, the maintainer, and hence the controller. Yeah, like for example, you have a company. Yeah, your company is owned by the boss. Yeah. And so he is in control of many things. Right? And he is the beneficiary of all of your activities. You all work for something and whatever profits come to you ultimately goes to the company or ultimately company means the boss who has started the company, that individual. Yeah. Similarly, this whole material universe, when we begin to understand, look at everything around us, yeah, the sun, the moon, the sky, the stars, the earth, the trees, the wind, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, uh, yeah, the, the earth on which we are walking, this body, you know, it's composed of the five elements. Everything is the energy of Lord. Yeah, we have no existence separate from Lord Krishna. So when we recognize this, that everything around us is the property of the Lord. This is step number one. When we recognize that everything is the property of the Lord and, you know, I am breathing the air, that which belongs to the Lord and every day the sunshine that comes, it is from Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. So the sun is nothing but Surya Dev is the eye of the Supreme Lord. Aham uh, Vaishnav, you know, in, yeah, yet Chandra Masi, yet Chagna, yet Tejo Vidhimamakam. So, Gama Vishacha Bhutani, Dharayam Yamojasa, Pushnami Chaushadi Sarva, so Mohut Varasatmaka. That is Krishna is telling that, you know, He is everything, the, the, the sunshine, you know, the rasa from the moon, and whatever vegetables that we are eating, the juices is. From the mercy of the, Krishna is telling that everything is coming from me. Aham and he is the fire of the digestion. From him are coming remembrance, forgetfulness. So he's there in our digestive system, in our nervous system, in every system. Yeah. So there is no place Krishna is not there. He's there everywhere. Yeah, he's within us and without us. So understanding this. Uh, proprietorship of the Lord, that everything belongs to him, puts us at peace. There's a direct connection. So when everything is the property of the Lord, what's the next thing? Everything is under the control of the Lord. Yeah, Krishna is not just a supreme proprietor, but he's also the supreme controller. Unlike many other organizations of uh, the world, Sometimes there might be a proprietor. He might have started a company, but then, you know, after he starts the company so many times, things may not work according to his will. Yeah, there are many kingdoms where, you know, the ministers have plotted, pulled down the king and have usurped the throne. Many times it happened in the history. Yeah. And in Kali Yuga, if you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, the 12th canto, how, you know, the kingly order has been, uh, has declined because of many invasions from the subordinates. Yeah, the French Revolution. Oh my God, you go back in the history, there's always instances where the subordinates have rebelled. They have brought down the rule of the kings. Yeah, so in this material world, even if you are the proprietor, there is no guarantee that you'll be the controller. People can overpower you and take it from you. Yeah, but Krishna is such a proprietor that he is also the supreme controller. Yeah. He is not only the supreme proprietor, but he is also the supreme controller of everything around. So when we understand this, that everything around me is the property of the Lord, when you actually be, uh, you know recognize this, what is the first thing that comes out as a feeling? From your heart. Yes, anybody? 
when you recognize everything as the property of the Lord, what is the first reciprocal feeling that comes from one's heart? Surrender. Surrender? Okay, that's that's a very high level. Okay. I mean, even when you're working, yeah. Next, any other? Submissive, humble. Makes us humble, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, when we are, like, let's say in a place where we recognize that what we are enjoying is actually the property of an owner, then what's the first feeling that we get to the, towards that person? Gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude. Excellent. Yes. Gratitude. See, the, the, the air that I'm breathing you know, the sunlight that is illuminating the world around me, the moon that gives such a solace to the heart and which is nourishing the vegetables that I'm eating. Yeah. It's it's the it's all it, it it's coming from someone. Yeah. So when I realize that, when I recognize that, forget realization. When I recognize, realization comes later. First is recognizing. Yeah, when you recognize that, what comes is a sense of gratitude. Oh, I have been given so much. Unasked. What comes is gratitude. And after that comes a sense of duty to reciprocate with that. Yeah. So these two things happen when you understand who is the proprietor of everything around me and who is controlling it. When we understand that, yes, behind everything that I see, there is a Vita. Someone who is in charge. Good, good, good. Please yeah. mute yourself. You can come to the Hare Krishna, please mute yourself. So, yeah. So that is understanding the controllership and the proprietorship. What comes next is beneficial. Yeah, bhoktaram yajna tapasa. So oftentimes our anxiety is that, you know, maybe, you know, I am the enjoyer of everything that I do. No, but all, for all your, you know, for uh, like in a company, whatever uh, things that you do, whatever work that you do, the ultimate benefactor is the boss. Yeah, similarly, the for all the yajnas and the tapasas that you do, the ultimate beneficiary is Lord Krishna. So recognizing these two and make, as one, some of one of you said, makes one feel grateful. Yeah, Gra develop gratitude towards God. So developing gratitude and duty is one thing, but then are they sub like are they sufficient to revive one's relationship with God? Yes, it does help in reviving. Uh, you know, relationship in the sense of, uh, you know, respect, reverence. But when you understand the quality of Sukhrida, yeah, Krishna is telling, oh, I am the beneficiary, I am the maintainer and controller. Along with that, I am the supreme well-wisher of every living entity. Now comes the quality of Sukhrida. Yeah, Krishna is Sukhrid. Sukhrid means a well-wisher of everyone. So Krishna is not just a kind of a maintainer, controller, and yes, every, the supreme proprietor, not just that. For every living entity, he is a well-wishing friend. How beautiful is it? You know, I mean, how many of you all know who is your boss, the CEO of your company? Do you have any relationship with him? And is he your true well-wisher? You don't even know. But Krishna is such an amazing personality that he is the supreme, you know, owner, proprietor of everything, this entire cosmos. Yeah, and not just the proprietor, he's a controller. You know, not a blade of grass moves without his sanction. Everything is in his control. To say that 
Krishna hears the prayer of you know, a black ant on a black rock on an Amavasya night. Even a prayer and a feeling of such a, black, uh, a small insignificant creature is heard by Krishna. He's supremely cognizant. That he's supreme controller. And not just that. Now what makes it very beautiful is he's Suhurit. He's a supreme well-wishing friend. Yeah, there's a beautiful um, Verse in the Mukundamala Sutra. Nathena Purushottame Trijagatam Nikadhi Pechetasa Sege Svasya Padasya Dhatari Pari Narayani Tishtati Yam Kinchit Purushottam Katipai Gramesha Malpatadam Sevya Yamrigaya Mahinaram Ahudha Varakavari so King Kulashekar Alvar is saying that, you know, um, the Purushottama, you know, of all the three worlds. Yeah. So, who is a supreme, Ekadhipe, Ekadhipa, that means he is one supreme, con, you know, owner. Adhipa means proprietor. The one supreme proprietor of all the three worlds, who is a Purushottama. He is willing to share his own personal domain with everyone who is willing to worship him with just their mana, with this cheta, chitta. Yeah, cheta sa means with their chitta. If you simply worship Lord Narayana with your chitta, as a reciprocation, he is willing to share his own personal domain with you. Yeah, that is the nature of God. Yeah. Narayana is willing to share his uh, entire personal domain with everybody who is just worshipping with their chitta. Yam kinchit purushathamam katipaye gramesham alpathadam So King Kulashekar Alvar is feeling very pity you know about all these people of this world. Why? For some alpartha, for some meagerly benefits, they are, you know, slogging like donkeys or you know, to why to please some gramesha. Yeah, gramesha means some local landlords or CEOs. <laughs> yeah, they're all trying hard, working hard to please some small time bosses around. Why? For alpatham. Alpatham means for some monetary benefits or for some comforts or for some luxuries or for some uh, a big car or uh, uh, you know, piece of land or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Or a bungalow. For that, for that alpatha, they're working hard day and night to please some, you know, immediate bosses. And King Kulashekar Alvar is very direct. Aho, mudha, rakhavayam. You know, oh, you know, these people are mudhas, fools, and Baraka means access. Forget, I mean, I don't want to tell more. <laughs> yeah. So, King Kulashekar Alvarin, who is a king, and he is telling that, you know, this is how, uh, you know, the Lord is willing to share his personal domain if you simply serve him with your mind. But running around some illusions, people are wasting their time serving, you know, minor lords. Yeah, for some meager benefits. Oh, what a foolishness is this. So this is Sauhurda. Yeah, Krishna is Suhrida because for the small service that he, you're rendering, he's willing to give you so much in return. Yeah, we see the whole Bhagavatam is full of these examples of how he reciprocated even the mind, you know, even The uh, smallest feeling of love from a devotee. Yeah, feeling of service from his devotee. Be the example of Putana. Yeah. And he's such a Suhrida that he's, he does not abandon anyone. Yeah. As Krishna, he has sided with the Pandavas. But the same Krishna as Balarama, he gave hope to Duryodhana. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has shown his chakra to Jagai and Madai. 
But the same Mahaprabhu, his expansion as Nityananda Prabhu, gave hope and uplifted Jaga and Madai and given them the highest benediction. Yeah. So in this way, Krishna is Saukhurad. Yeah, he is the supreme well-wishing friend of every living entity. Whether he is killing a demon or he is reciprocating the love of his dearest devotees like Yashoda Mai or the gopis. In both sides, he is being the well-wisher. Yeah, that is the suhrid nature of the Lord. And when a, when a person, when a devotee or an, a living entity tries to understand, appreciate the suhrid nature of the Supreme Lord, it brings about a lot of peace within one's own self. Yeah, and when one finds that peace within oneself, one finds that peace in their activities, in their relationships, and it spreads and it becomes the root of world peace. Today, I mean, you know, we see that the whole India is today united uh, for the one purpose of uh, starting of the Ram Mandir. There's so much of energy in that, right? There's so much of positivity in that. That's the beauty of, uh, you know, understanding the source and worshipping the source. Yeah. That, that is what is universal brotherhood. Yeah. And we understand who is the father. How can there be brotherhood without understanding who is the father? Yeah, this is what is Prabhupada's argument. So when we understand this nature of Krishna, that he is the supreme controller, the supreme proprietor, you know, the proprietor, controller, the maintainer, and along with that, supreme well-wishing friend of every living entity, then there is peace yeah, within one's own heart. So this uh, Sukhruda, this is where we come across the word Sukhruda in the Bhagavad Gita. I also want to share with you that uh, the word Sukhruda also comes in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah? So I will try to look at this verse. It's very beautiful explanation. I'll share this. I'm sharing the screen. Please see. So this comes in the 10th canto, 48th chapter, where uh, Akrura is offering these prayers to the Lord. Yeah. He's saying, Kah Pandita Svada Param Sharanam Samiyar Bhakta Priyad Vitagira Sukhrida Krita Jnan Sarvan Dadati Sukhrido Bhajato Vikaman Atmanam Apyu Pachaya Pachayo Nayasya Says, what learned person would approach anyone but you for shelter when you are the affectionate, grateful, and truthful well-wisher of your devotees? To those who worship you in sincere friendship, you reward everything they desire, even your own self, yet you never increase or diminish. Yeah? So, this verse describes the Lord and his devotees as Sukhrida, the well-wishers. So not just the Lord, but his devotees are also Sukhrida on behalf of Lord. So we will appreciate this quality uh, from now on. So the Lord is the well-wisher of his devotee and the devotee lovingly desires all happiness for the Lord. So this is what is the meaning of Sukhrida, a well-wisher. Yeah. So... Yeah. So... Both the Supreme Lord and his devotees are Sukhruda. That means a well-wishing friend. So this is in fact uh, one of the qualities of a Vaishnava. Yeah, there are 26 Vaishnava qualities. Yeah, Kripalu Akrita Droha, Satya Sarasama, Nidosha Vadanya Mridu Shuchi Akinchana, Sarvopakaraka Shanta, Krishnaika Sharina. Yeah, Sarvopakaraka means one who is wishing the welfare, yeah, one who does welfare for every living entity. That is Sarvopakaraka. It is, uh, uh, you know, uh, one of the 26 Vaishnava qualities. So this Sukhrida, we also come across this particular word, Sukhrida, in the uh, service attitude of Devakuti towards her husband, Kardamamuni. 
Yeah. So in this particular verse in the third canto of Bhagavatam, it says Vishrambhena Atma Shauchena. We have covered Atma Shaucham. Yeah. Gauravena Damenacha. Gaurav means respect. Dhamma is self-control. Yeah. Vishrambhena Atma Shauchena. Gauravena Damenacha. Then Sushru Shau. Yeah. Shushru Shena. Sushru we did in the last session. That is service attitude. Saukhru Dena. That we are doing today. Vacha Madhurayacham. Yeah, that is Madhura Vacha, which is sweet speech. Yeah. So with these qualities, Devahuti has served her husband Kandamuni and pleased his heart. So, so for a wife to be a well-wishing friend of her husband is one of her duties. Now, one of the Patni Dharma is to be a well-wishing friend of her husband. So many a times we see that sometimes there can be differences of opinions between wife and husband, which might turn out into very bitter fights. Yeah. And in that bitter fight, sometimes, you know, uh, some women get caught up in such negativity. Yeah. They spiral down into, you know, a sense of victimhood and they get so overpowered with such negative thoughts and develop such bitterness that they begin to curse. Yeah. Curse their own spouses. Yeah, this is very, very uh, non Vaishnava kind of a quality. Yeah, for a wife, it is her dharma to always wish well for her husband, no matter what she is going through, how much of pain she is subjected. Yeah, it is. Uh, there is a beautiful episode in the Mahabharata. When um, Arjuna, after his exile, he comes back home. Of, uh, I mean, he is, it's a self-imposed exile of 12 years to the forest. He comes back home but uh, and everybody is waiting for him. But he comes back after having married Subhadra, you know. So Draupadi, you know, for her, it is like, you know, she married, uh, she was first attracted to Arjuna, you know, in the Swayamvara because he was the one who won, won the Swayamvara. And, you know, she married and she's been through all the tough times. And, uh, you know, and she had, they hardly spent time in, in the Prastha and Arjuna leaves uh, for the exile in the forest. And when he comes back, he came back after 12 years, but he didn't come alone. He came with another, you know, wife. Subhadra Devi. Daupati was really so pained. She was hurt. Uh, it's natural. Yeah. But at that time, <clears throat> Arjuna expertly uh, guides Subhadra that, uh, you know, uh, Draupadi is such a Pativrata, such a chaste lady, that whatever she says, whatever she utters, comes forth to be true. So you go and take her blessings. Yeah. Then uh, Subhadra then approaches Draupadi with such humility yeah? and uh, presents herself with all gentleness. Yeah. Then immediately Draupadi melts and she blesses Subhadra. Yeah. She blesses Subhadra that may your husband be a hero who wins all battles. And who will be ever victorious? And may you be the mother of great sons. Yeah, these are the two blessings that she gives Subhadra when she approaches Adraupadi and takes her blessings. So this is the heights of you know a well wish being a well wisher. He was in a state of you know pain, you know agony. That Arjuna has married again. She has married uh, Subhadra, but when. Uh, Subhadra approached her, the first thing that came from her mouth is, may your husband be ever victorious. And she tells that, may you be the mother of great son. Sure enough, with no time, Subhadra becomes the mother of Abhimanyu, such a great hero. Yeah, this is being Suhrid, being a well-wisher of everybody, and especially for a wife, to be a well-wisher of one's own husband. 
that's our patni dharma so and so this is how we see this example of uh, being a suhrit you know as a dutiful wife also we see this in the example of uh, the great leadership of yudhishthir maharaj yeah. yudhishthir maharaj is a uh, dharma personified when you see the whole mahaprasthanika leela yeah the mahaprasthan is that great journey the great uh, supreme journey towards the heavenly realms this is the end part of mahabharat the mahaprasthanika parva and the swargarohana parva yeah. so after uh, krishna departs uh, yudhishthir maharaj gives up his kingly armor yeah immediately renounces and performs different uh, yagnas and rituals and just wears uh, the barks of the trees yeah and following him all the four pandavas his brothers and draupadi alone yeah they also clad in the barks and the travel across india yeah first they travel towards the east and arjuna deposits his uh, quivers and the gandiva bow yeah and then they travel towards the south and then they travel towards the west and in the west uh, they see the dwaraka that has been drowned after the departure of lord krishna and then they proceed towards the north and from the foothills of himalaya they walk upwards to the great himalayas yeah. and after reaching the himalayas they walk further up and they you know further up that is more no longer the earthly realm the reach of the realm that is beyond the earth yeah and they march towards the meru the meru parvat yeah which is an ethereal realm it's not located on the earth yeah and that's when they start walking and when they start walking along with them you know there is first yudhishthir maharaj behind him is bhima behind bhima is arjuna behind arjuna is nakula behind nakula is sahadeva and behind sahadeva is draupadi and behind draupadi there's also one more personality so that's a dog okay so all these people are following yudhishthir maharaj this is called the mahaprasthan their uh, journey into the uh, towards the empyrean so when they were walking and walking and walking and walking then what happened uh, you know slowly uh, draupadi stops i mean she her body falls down collapses yeah and but yudhishthir maharaj does not even turn back he walks ahead so there are so many controversies yudhishthir maharaj is so heartless that his own wife has fallen down that he didn't even turn back and see you know he's heartless no yudhishthir maharaj did not turn back and see even though draupadi has fallen down is because he knew that for a person who has embarked upon this mahaprasthana journey their destination is guaranteed it is very auspicious it is in the higher realms and second reason why he didn't turn back is because the body has been dropped down in a uh, realm beyond the earthly realm it did not call for the final rites that is required in this uh, earthly planetary systems so that is the reason why he didn't turn back and see it's not because he is heartless so and then uh, after that uh, after the drought there are reasons given these are in details i have written in my book uh, also it is there in mahabharat after draupadi then it is uh, sahadev who falls down and then it is nakula then it is arjuna and uh, at last it is bhima who himself falls down yeah so bhima keeps inquiring oh brother uh, yudhishthira draupadi is so faultless why did he end her journey here then yudhishthira answers Uh, you know that she had a special partiality for arjuna although she is uh, the wedded wife of all five of us in this way you know yudhishthir keeps answering the questions uh, then bhima asks why did uh, sahadeva fall down yeah and uh, uh, then he gives an answer the nakula why did nakula fall down says nakula is attached to his bodily glamour and he considered considered himself superior in beauty to everyone that is why he falls down and why did arjuna fall down you know i don't remember him speaking a lie ever 
why did he uh, uh, he drop his body? Then Yudhishthir says, you know, Arjuna made big promises and he has uh, special to vanquish everyone within one day and he did not keep up that promise. So that is why he falls down. Then he asks, oh, brother, even I am falling down. I am I falling down. I've always followed you, who is dharma personified. Then um, Yudhishthir Maharaj says, you know, you were insensitive uh, to others' hunger. You were always focused on your own eating. That is why you pay the price for it today, oh Bhima, he says. Then Bhima falls down. So, uh, interestingly, this whole order of uh, falling down, why Draupadi first, why Sahadeva next, it's not because of the age, but it is because of the subtlety of their contaminations. I'll explain this sometime maybe when I speak about Mahabharat. <clears throat> Then what happens is it's only Yudhishthir Maharaj alone who walks up and reaches the um, uh, higher realms. So, so as he's walking up and further and further, then all of a sudden, you know, a beautiful chariot comes and appears in front of him. Yeah, And from that chariot, which is, you know, blazing and effulgent and, you know, and whose wheels are, you know, in the sky. Yeah, they're not touching the ground. Yeah. From that chariot gets off a great personality who's Indra himself, the king of all heavens. He himself gets off the chariot and he welcomes Yudhishthira. That, oh Yudhishthira, Dharma Rajan, your Dharma personified. So today uh, you have reached the highest realms by the dint of your great life that you have led. I welcome you to the heavens. Please come and alight the uh, chariot and we will take you to the heavens. Then here is a cross. Then Yudhishthir Maharaj says, Oh, uh, Indra, I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you for the invite. But I cannot come alone. Here's a dog which is following me. I cannot uh, come on, uh, alone by leaving this dog which has followed me faithfully all along. Then Indra says, Oh, Yudhishthira, you know, a dog cannot come to the heavens. It has to qualify itself. How can you bring a dog along with you? You have to come alone. Then Yudhishthira says, No, uh, it has followed me. It has taken shelter of me. And because it has sh taken shelter of me, I should take it wherever I then, then, like There will be a nice sweet argument between you know, Indra and uh, Yudhishthira. So Indra finally says, you decide for yourself, Yudhishthira. The dog is not allowed to the heaven. And if you want to get the dog, you yourself will lose the opportunity to enter heavens for good. All your piles credits are going to be cancelled. And your ticket to the heavens is also cancelled. You will have to go back to earth and you will not uh, be allowed to the heavens again. Then at that, Yudhishthir Maharaj says, I would rather vanquish all the heavens and all the comforts than vanquish my dharma of giving shelter to the one who has surrendered to me. When Yudhishthir says this, then the, you know, a big magic happens and the dog transforms into Dharmaraj, the Dharma personified. Yeah, Yama Dharmaraj. And he says, oh, glories to you, Yudhishthira. Only you can effort to forego even all the uh, you know, heavenly realms just for the sake of a dog. Yeah. So who else other than you can deserve these higher realms? So all the higher realms are awaiting you. It says, please welcome. It is our great fortune to have you in the heavens. So saying this, you know, the, uh, uh, the you know, Indra Dev welcomes Yudhishthir Maharaj into the chariot. You know, he passed the test. And when he's entering into the chariot, the first thing Yudhishthir Maharaj asks uh, Indra is, I want to go to that place where my beloved brothers and that beautiful princess Draupadi is. For me, wherever they are, that is heaven for me. And where they are not there, that is hell. 
So take me to that place where my brothers and doctor is. So this is, you know, you know, although we, you know, people say that you know, Vishnu Maharaj didn't even turn back to see uh, when Draupadi's drop, body has dropped off. But just look at his uh, Suhrida, the nature of the loving attitude that he had towards his own brothers and towards his wife. Yeah, when he was at the juncture of alighting to the higher realms, he said that, you know, I want these people to come along with me. I wouldn't want to go alone. And where they are, that is my heaven. Where they're not there, that's hell. So in this way, you know, the beautiful uh, Saukhruda nature of Yudhishthir Maharaj is so beautifully explained in the Mahabharata. And uh, so as I said, so one of the or 26 qualities of Vaishnava, one of the quality is Sarva Pakaraka. That is one who does uh, great benefit on welfare for everyone around. So Srila Prabhupada, you know, one of the, uh, whenever he wrote letters to his disciples, he used to sign saying, your ever well-wisher. Yeah. So Hrida means well-wisher, a well-wishing friend. So Prabhupada used to sign your well-wisher. Not just signing your well-wisher, in the entire life of Prabhupada, whenever his disciples recall his pastimes, I mean, his uh, interactions with them, most of them, what they fondly remember is his loving and caring attitude. Recently, uh, some time back, I have conducted a teacher training course. One question I have asked all my students, who is your favorite teacher? That is question number one. Question number two is, why is he or she of your favorite teacher? Okay, I gave them some time to think. So everybody thought and everybody uh, they gave their answer. This is my so and so is my favorite teacher. And why is that person your favorite teacher? They all recall a quality of their teacher in which they personally had an interaction with them where they showed their care. Yeah, you know, some girl said, you know, one day uh, I was just dozing off in the class. So my teacher came to me and instead of shouting at me, she just asked me that uh, didn't you have good sleep last night? Is everything at home okay? She just asked me like this gently and sweetly and she left. And you know, I really was so touched by her care that, you know, and her personality that I, all, I wanted to be her favorite student and I started studying well to please her. Yeah. So what, no matter, you know, there's a saying, I don't, um, I don't care how much you know, unless I know how much you care. You know, this is what everybody feels, right? I don't care how much you know, unless I know how much you care. So Prabhupada has uh, really exemplified this, uh, this beautiful quality of being a true well-wisher in his caring and loving attitudes towards his disciples. Many of his pastimes, like if you read, uh, the uh, Yamuna Mataji's uh, uh, book. Yeah. So in that, uh, Mataji recalls how when she was once down with jaundice yeah, in the in India, when they all, when uh, Prabhupada's disciples have all come to India, uh, many a times Yamuna Mataji's health went down. So at one point of time, after a program at Delhi, she was down with jaundice. So at that time, uh, you know, and in having the jaundice, they had to live in a, you know, overcrowded place, you know, room, a common room. So she couldn't handle it, and she just uh, went to a, you know, an open closet, a small uh, corridor-like place to survive there. But even there, her health was worsening. So one day, Prabhupada just visited um, and inquired where Yamuna Mataji was, and when she was not found. Prabhupada went and saw that, you know, she was going through this ill health, you know, suffering in a remote place. So he took a lot of uh, compassion on her, you know, you know, he just touched her head and, say, and said that, you know, do not worry, I will take care of you. And then Prabhupada immediately arranged a good room for Mataji and, you know, and good uh, facility and medication. And every day, Prabhupada used to go and inquire, how are you doing? 
from uh, Yamuna Mataji recalls that this care, you know, with a lot of um, feeling. So in this way, Prabhupada, you know, wherever he went, he showed this, you know, Saukhu, the, the, uh, the caring attitude towards his disciples. Once his holiness Giriraj Swami Maharaj, you know, you, you know, in Bombay when Prabhupada was building this Radha Ras Bihari temple. So Giriraj Maharaj was uh, traveling uh, throughout Bombay, you know, to gather uh, the you know, different uh, life members and promoting and all that. And Bombay traveling can be very, very hectic in the local trains. So like three continuous days, uh, Maharaj was just, you know, traveling and, you know, trying for donations and all that. So one day when he was, he returned, Prabhupada called for him. And Giriraj Maharaj went to Prabhupada's quarters to see him. So Prabhupada, when he looked at Giriraj Maharaj, immediately he understood that he was tired. But Giriraj Maharaj didn't realize that he himself was tired. So even before asking Giriraj Maharaj anything, Prabhupada gave him grapes and told him, eat those grapes. And he said, eat right in front of me. <laughs> yeah, many times devotees hold it in the hands, they go outside and give it to someone or they forget to eat. Only. Prabhupada said, eat it right in front of me. So Giriraj Maharaj ate and, you know, immediately he felt a lot of energy, you know, coming up. So it's more than the grapes, it's that love and care and affection of Prabhupada that has uh, certainly has given that you know, instant energy in Maharaj. Uh, so this is my purport. <laughs> then, uh, so, so in that way, like Prabhupada has uh, shown his care and affection to many, many, uh, in, in many instances. He's also shown his love for, for even animals. So this is what uh, we see. Suhrida is not just towards, you know, God, towards uh, others, but also we see towards the environment. We see in this, um, uh, in Ramayana, Lord Ram, in the Chaturmasya period, he did not go in search of Sita. Although he could have, if he wanted, he would have simply sent the monkeys to search for Sita in the Chaturmasya period. But he did not do that. Why? One of the reasons is that during the Chaturmasya period or the rainy season, the whole in the whole environment, there are certain dynamics. Yeah, different worms lay eggs. And, uh, you know, all the plantations and pollinations and, you know, a lot of, uh, in, the, in the whole ecosystems, there are certain changes that, that happen, which require, uh, you know, tranquility, that in, you know, an undisturbed environment. So if at that time, if Ram would have to order for a search for Sita, this whole ecosystems would have had to be uh, interrupted or intervene. And he didn't want to disrupt that environmental systems. That is why, although he was going through so much trauma, so much pain, and although it was such an urgency, yeah, what could be a greater emergency than to search for a lost wife who's been abducted? Yeah. In such an emergency, Lord Ram has withheld being sensitive to the environment around him. This is Suhrid, being a well-wisher. So we also saw in seeing Prabhupada, Prabhupada was sensitive or not just to all the disciples, even to the needs, unexpressed needs. When he was in New Vrindavan, Prabhupada uh, once went to New Vrindavan. New Vrindavan is a place that's extremely cold, very, very cold. Anytime you go in the year, it's extremely chill. And if you go in the months of November or December, you'll freeze on there is thick ice. So once when Prabhupada visited, uh, he'd seen so many Matajis and all serving, you know, so actively. So he called for many of his Prabhuji disciples and said, please look after the needs of Matajis. He said they don't express their needs. Yeah, understand them and please provide them whatever they need, whether it's a thick bedding or, you know, a proper warm wear or prasadam on time, they never asked for it. You know, please offer them unasked. And this was his instruction to his disciples. 
So in that way, Prabhupada also, when once when he went to New Vrindavan, in the initial days, there was a cow, you know, that was, uh, it was, he used to give lots of milk. You know, when Prabhupada went first to New Vrindavan, sometime in the year 1969, so at that, that time, there was a cow which used to give lots of milk and Prabhupada used to taste that milk and used to say, this milk is so nectarine. I have never tasted milk like this. Then all the disciples said, Prabhupada, you know, this is a, it's a wonderful cow. It's a jersey cow. It's black, you know, with a kind of a white uh, tilak-like marking on its forehead. And they all named the cow Kaliya. The Prabhupada said, Prabhupada, this is the milk of Kaliya. Then... Uh, so Prabhupada said, oh, so this, it tastes amazing. So, you know, he used to pat that cow whenever he went on the fields. And later, Prabhupada revisited Vrindavan almost, uh, you know, eight, seven years later. And by then, uh, you know, when all the cows grew up, you know, for a cow, seven years is a big time in its lifetime. And so this Kaliya has really grown up. So I'll end with this, this is the last thing. That's uh, Kaliya has really grown up, and Prabhupada went, um, and uh, you know he was just going for a walk. So at that time, this Kaliya, along with the group herds of other cows, was staying, was you know grazing at a distance. So as soon as this Kaliya saw Prabhupada, it just left grazing, and it made its way through the herds, and it came towards Prabhupada. And, you know, Prabhupada, you know, again, patted uh, the cow and said, oh, my old friend Kaliya. Then, you know, uh, it started walking along with Prabhupada, as if, you know, walking with, you know, all his disciples used to walk with Prabhupada, walk with Prabhupada for a distance. So, you know, in this way, you know, Prabhupada showed that uh, personal care and love, not for just disciples and, you know, the Matajis who tried to serve him or anybody who came to take shelter of him, even the animals and even the trees. Prabhupada's many times, even in Vrindavan temple, if you see there's a, outside the Krishna Balram temple, there's a Tamal tree. So during the time of construction, some of them wanted to cut the tree off. But Prabhupada said, no, yeah, do not cut the trees. They are devotees. So this is how, you know, Prabhupada had shown his uh, Sukhra, the, the compassionate nature, the well-wishing nature to even trees and animals and everybody. Because in everyone, he has seen that divinity, Krishna's presence. So I will conclude my uh, discussion today. So today, the topic we have discussed is Sukhrida. Sukhrida is loving attitude or being a well-wisher. So we have seen this in the context of Bhagavad Gita, uh, how the Lord himself is a Suhrid, a supreme well-wishing friend of every living entity, Suhridam Sarva Bhutana. We had seen this in the context of, you know, so a God, a Krishna's attitude towards his devotee. We have seen this in context of a wife's attitude towards the husband. We have seen this in the context of a leader's quality towards his dependents. And we have seen this in the context of a guru's attitude towards his disciples and everyone around him. So I will end the session here. Thank you all very much. So I will just leave the floor, question, uh, floor open for any questions. Mataji, Hare Krishna, Nanda Pranam. Mataji, I was asking this question, why did you just go to Draupadi Mahi? Mataji, why did you go to Draupadi Mahi? Why did you go to Draupadi Mahi? जो भी उनके वाइफ्स थे या फैमिली मेंबर्स वो क्यों नहीं गए अच्छा सो व्हाई द्रौपदी नो सारे ने एवरीबॉडी वाज सीन द होल महाप्रस्थान वाज युधिष्ठिर महाराज द फोर पांडवास एंड द्रौपदी सो द्रौपदी वाज द फर्स्ट वन टू फॉल डाउन एंड आफ्टर दैट इवन सहदेव नकुल अर्जुन एंड भीम हैव आल्सो हैव आल्सो फॉलन डाउन दैट मींस दैट बॉडीज हैव फॉलन डाउन बट देयर सोल्स हैव असेंडेड to the heavens. Is your question, is, is that your question, Meghna? Yeah. Uh, 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 uh,
वो क्यों नहीं लिए और ओके व्हाई डिड दे टेक ओनली द्रौपदी एंड माइन ऑन द रेस्ट ऑफ द वाइफ्स ठीक है या सो actually subhadra maya was handed over the responsibility of the different sons i mean of like parikshit maharaj was there and uh, the later on even vajranath yeah vajranath who is the grandson of lord krishna he was made the uh, king of mathura yeah mathura province and different places were allotted to different uh, people so yudhishthir it was the desire of yudhishthir maharaj that subhadra maya stays behind and guides you know these kings yeah so now why why draupadi and why not subhadra it's like it's uh, you know it's an equation difficult, difficult to explain like for example uh, when uh, pandu maharaj has died yeah it was madri who did sati sahagaman along with pandu maharaj and she requested kunti to stay back and take care of her sons and she says because even kunti was wanting to relinquish her body in the absence of her husband but madri requests that o oh, kunti you know your service as a mother is so much needed for all the five so you please stay back to take care of them okay so that's how they share the responsibilities so in this case you know draupadi if you see has accompanied the pandavas all through beat uh, in the mahaprasthan or during the exile to the forest because she is a common patni for all yeah and subhadra maya had a additional responsibility that she had to fulfill as she was in she was uh, you know as a mother yeah, as a rajmata okay does it answer you maybe na जी माता जी थैंक यू सो मच या एनी फर्दर क्वेश्चन यस प्रिधि प्रिधि आस हाउ डू वी डेवलप द क्वालिटी ऑफ सुहर या दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बिकॉज ऑफ इन टाइम्स इट इज वी टेंट इन वी टेंट टू be mostly in the i centered zone that is the self as a center to actually get into the role of being a well wisher of everyone it's not so easy yeah so at least in the men mentally one can begin to uh, you know uh, desire for the well being of others like you know sarve jana sukhino bhavantu these are our prayers so some of our uh, you know our prayers are very very potent yeah even the teacher prays sahana bhavatu sahana bhunatu ya sahaviryam kavara karava hai yeah that is even uh, a teacher before the teacher begins to uh, teach the student there are some invocation prayers that invokes the right mood and consciousness so practicing some of these prayers can actually inculcate these positive qualities of non enviousness yeah Uh, it's tejas vina vadhita mastu mavid vishava hai you know let me be and uh, the teacher is praying that you know let this exchange of knowledge be harmonious and let there be no envy in this process yeah you imagine the teacher before giving the knowledge to the disciple is preparing the mood by saying let this uh, knowledge transfer be a harmonious one and let there be no envy yeah because the uh, material nature can be so so harsh that it can bring about negativity between any people yeah any relationship so being conscious in our relationships and being cautious of negativity that can come in in any kind of relationship and preparing by engaging uh, you know by associating more with the divine through prayers you know through a conscious cultivation of divine qualities like for example today the whole day we are meditating the quality of suhrida how the lord is a suhrida and just by understanding that suhrida the nature of the lord itself it can invoke that quality in us and appreciating that quality in uh, great personalities like yudhishthir maharaj in shila prabhupada you no know, it inspires such a quality in us and appreciating the dharma of a patni to be an ever you know a well wisher of her husband in in good and bad 
in good times, okay, to be a well-wisher is fine. Even that becomes so difficult today, these days, because in good times, we simply take, take and take and enjoy. Masti karo bas. No, in good times and in bad times, as I gave the example of Draupadi, in her, you know, she was in a turmoil. You know, when his when her husband returned home with a co-wife. But still at that time she you know gave heartfelt blessings, saying that may your husband be ever victorious in every battle that he fights. Can you imagine? And you know, such a well-wishing heart she had. So so when we appreciate these characters and personalities from our Tihasas, how even in negative situations they have managed to be supremely uh, well-wishing, you know, they carried that loving attitude and how, you know, Devahuti has won the heart of a great renunciate like Tardama Muni through her uh, attitude of service and through this quality of being a Suharit and what all she, she got in return as reciprocation for that. <laughs> yeah, so when we understand this quality and appreciate them in this uh, personalities in the Uttihas house, and when we see them in our contemporary people, like, you know, yes, in Srila Prabhupada, how this uh, quality of being uh, a, a well-wisher, a friend, and a caring guide to his disciples, and how the disciples remember that even till date with gratitude, and how it nourishes their heart. We develop some positivity, right? We develop some attraction to this quality of being a Sukhrit. So that attraction itself is actually you're developing that quality. When you develop appreciation for that quality, appreciation for that quality in a person, you know, then the, you're already developing that quality. So if you have heard this class well, I can assure you that this quality is already becoming a part of you. Yeah. And then next, how, next level is practical application. Whenever you get opportunities in your life, Try to be a well-wisher. Whenever you are uh, going through a negative feeling about somebody, be objective. You know, they say hate the sinner, but not the sin. Uh, sorry, hate the sin, but not the sinner. Yeah. Uh, that is, you hate that negative quality in that person, but not hate that person. And not just hate, not just not hate the person, wish well for that person. You know, may this person be purified. Pray to Krishna that may this person be helped, you know, to go through this struggle. Do not harbor negativity towards the person. Be a well-wisher in, you know, even amidst negative situations. So that is your practical application. So how to develop any quality? Number one, genuinely appreciate the quality in the Supreme Person or Krishna. That is why Krishna Katha is so, so, so important. Yeah. Hearing, regular hearing, Shravanam of Krishna Katha is the solution to all problems of Kali. Aho, aho na kale vidhuyate, sudha, sudha, ramaduram pale pale, dine, dine, chandana, chandra, shitale, yasho, yasho, nathana, yasya, hiyate. So the, all the ills of Kali are just gone just by hearing, yasho, yasho, nathana, yasya, hiyate. Who is Yashoda Tanaya? Krishna. By hearing the Yasha, the glories of Yashoda Tanaya, that itself actually removes all the ills of Kali. So how do you develop any quality? Regular Krishna Katha, because Krishna is ultimately reservoir of all the qualities. Next is appreciating those qualities in his pure devotees. Yeah, which are stated in the Mahabharata, in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. And appreciating those quality in the Guru, Guru, Guru Parampara. And then uh, appreciating those same quality in the Vaishnavas around us. Yeah. And then when we are in situations, we practically try to apply them and, and also develop that quality. So this is a way of developing any quality. And one secret ingredient is, one secret key to develop qualities is identify a person who is having those qualities Go and serve that person. This is the magic of Vaishnavism. Whenever you serve a person with great qualities, you automatically get those qualities. So how this transfer happens is cannot be explained by logic, but this is how it is. Okay, I hope this answers the question. 
So let us, I will, uh, okay. Yeah, so I'll end the session. Any other questions you can post in the group.